let's continue. So in the previous class, uh, we started moving into the world of magnetism. So we said bye-bye to the electricity and now we started moving into the world of magnetism. And yesterday we introduced some basic idea, concepts, right, which we need in order to be comfortable, to feel comfortable in that world of magnetism. So first of all, we, uh, we sort of agreed that we need to introduce magnetic field, right? So then uh, we uh, decided uh, which probe system we're going to use. It's a, a small permanent magnet, compass needle. Then. Uh, we agreed about uh, which side, which pole, which which side of the uh, compass needle is going to be called the north pole, right? And also, uh, direction of the magnetic field is determined by that uh, direction of the north pole uh, of the needle, right? Compass needle. So if north pole shows that way, so that's the direction of the magnetic field at the point where the compass needle is, right? Uh, then, of course, we introduce magnetic field lines, uh, very similar to the electric field lines, except there is immediately probably the major differences between the world of electricity and world of magnetism. There are no magnetic monopoles, right? So far, no one has ever seen them. So as a result, uh, all magnetic field lines form closed loops. So all magnetic field lines must form closed loops, right? So that's what we discussed yesterday. All right, and then uh, at the end we discussed uh, what we refreshed uh, vector product, right? Cross product, uh, because I told you from now on uh, all the most of the formulas, most of the, the laws are, are going to have uh, the uh, cross product. Right. Okay, so now after introducing these uh, basic ideas, now it's time to uh, start introducing the foundation. So we need to start presenting fundamental laws. Like in the world of electricity, you remember what we did in the fir um, first? We introduced all laws which can be used to find electric field. Again, all those are fundamental laws. And also uh, equation for the electric force. So those, that what... Uh, is formed foundation in the world of electricity. Now we need to present something similar in the world of magnetism, right? All possible laws which can be used to find magnetic field, then magnetic force, and once you do that, that's our foundation. After that, you can, you can say, okay, I'm the king or the president of this world, whatever political system you prefer, right? So today, the first fundamental law, again, it means that it can be applied at any point of the universe, at any moment of time, by anyone, no restrictions. Bio-Savar law, law which can be used to find magnetic field. Right. Okay, so now let's start presenting. So it's still, it's, we're still in chapter 29 and uh, Bio-Savar law. As I said, uh, this law we use or can be used or is used uh, to find magnetic field created by a wire, any wire. It doesn't have to be straight, no. It can be bent, twisted, or of this complicated uh, shape, right? So, and if you want, for example, to find uh, net magnetic field at this point, yeah, uh, you can use this Biosavar law. But, of course, uh, since of uh, different parts of the wire are uh, uh, in a different conditions relative to this point. Of course, uh, we need to write this law in a differential form. Basically, it means what? It means that you need to take infinitesimally small section of the wire and write contribution to the net magnetic field at the point from that section, right? And then, if you want to find the net magnetic field, of course, you will have to integrate that expression. So, that, so that's what it means, differential form. Right. So we need to write um, uh, the contribution to the magnetic field at a certain point, created by, a, by an infinitesimally small section of the wire. Right. Okay, so now... So let's assume that this is a piece of wire right, over completely arbitrary shape, right, and let's say we want to find magnetic field at that uh, black dot, right, and in order to uh, see a better three-dimensional uh, picture, these two planes um, 
was uh, were added to the picture. I took this picture from the book, right? So you see one plane is horizontal, you see this grayish, and the vertical one, uh, that one. So they are perpendicular to each other. Mm -hmm. And we want to find magnetic field on, for example, that vertical plane above the wire. So, as I said, we need to take infinitesimally small section of the wire, right? Infinitesimally small, it's basically almost like a point, right? Very, very short. Uh, ds, and you see this, this ds is presented as a vector. So what determines direction of this vector? There is one direction in the wire. It's the direction of the current. So direction of the current determines direction of this vector ds. So current that way, so that's the direction of ds. Current this way, so that's the direction of ds. We need to remember that. Then, of course, uh, I'm just preparing in ingredients for that law, right? And of course, in a few minutes, I will sort of open up the law. <clears throat> then, of course, we will need to know the distance from the, uh, this section ds to the point in question, to the point where we want to find magnetic field. It makes sense. The farther point is, of course, the smaller probably contribution is going to be, right? So, of course, there will be um, r involved and then also r hat. What is R hat? Whenever, guys, you see some symbol with a hat on top, usually it means that that is a unit vector. You remember unit vector? Like uh, I hat, it's a unit vector showing a positive direction of the x-axis. And magnitude of that vector is 1. Then J hat, positive uh, y direction. Again, magnitude is 1. K hat, for example, uh, that's the positive z direction magnitude of one. Here, R hat, again, it's a unit vector, all right? So it has magnitude of one. Don't forget that because every semester on the final exam, especially when we were at school, I saw uh, a few students struggling to find the magnitude of R hat. No, it's just one. The goal of that vector is just to show a direction. So that way, that way. So that's the goal. Magnitude is 1. So in this case, the goal of this vector r hat is to show a direction to the point in question, to the point uh, where we want to find magnetic field. So our point is over there, so r hat points that way. Point is over there, so r hat points that way. So that's the role of that vector, that's it. All right. Okay, so again, as I said, uh, this is a fundamental equation. So it cannot be derived. It's written just based on observation somehow, right? So cannot be derived. <clears throat> and so as a result, pretty much, if it's a fundamental equation based on observations, then what can we do? We just, I can say something like, ta-da, here's the law, right? Let's use it, right? Here's the law. Again, it's the uh, expression which allows us to find magnetic field. Okay, contribution to the net magnetic field uh, at that point from this infinitesimally small section ds. <laughs> the only thing I would change, although it's a, not a big deal, I would change, I wouldn't probably use, I would not probably use b, I would just use db. Because most of the time we have to integrate this equation in order, in order to find the net magnetic field at that point. So it, it makes sense to use just db. But author wrote b and... Uh, Okay, it's not a crime, but I would prefer db. Okay, so what do we have in this uh, law? First of all, new symbol mu naught. We've never seen this before. And that is permeability, universal constant, first of all, I should say. It's a universal constant. All right, uh, and it's called permeability of free space. Physical meaning, think of this constant as basically a parameter describing magnetic properties of the vacuum. It's sort of like epsilon naught in the world of electricity. Epsilon naught is uh, the constant in the world of electricity. Mu naught is the constant in the world of magnetism. Epsilon naught describes electric properties of vacuum. Uh, mu naught, magnetic properties of vacuum. So they play similar roles in a different world. All right. So mu naught. Uh, the value of mu naught, 4 pi times 10, times 10 to the power of minus 7. All right. Or Without 4 pi, that's uh, numeric there. Then the next um, look, 
if you look first at this law, the first reaction should be uh, like this. Look, what the strange constant in front of these uh, quantities? mu naught over 4 pi you must be really crazy in order to introduce uh, such a weird looking constant uh, factor in front uh, in front of this I don't know, construction of uh, uh, of those quantities so how come the thing is uh, if you introduce mu naught the way we introduce this mu naught then uh, ampere's law which we're going to introduce maybe at the end of today's class or maybe on Monday, most likely on Monday, then Ampere's law will look elegant, nice, gorgeous, right? So whatever adjectives, adjectives you want to use, right? But as a result, the our law looks ugly. You remember the same trade-off we had uh, almost, yeah, in the first lecture of this semester when we introduced uh, Coulomb's law. And you remember that strange constant, 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught, right? And again, we introduced epsilon naught, and as a result, uh, Gauss's law looked elegant, but Coulomb's law looked ugly, right? So the same story over here. So this constant looked ugly, but as a result, Ampere's law looks more elegant, right? Okay, so uh, a few words about this constant. Then next, what determines direction? Of this uh, magnetic field. Mu naught is just a positive constant. 4 pi again positive constant. Right? Current it's the value of the current. It's just a number, positive number all the time. 5, 3, 2, whatever. Right? Then r squared again it's a square of the distance. Distance can be negative it's just a positive number all the time plus it's squared. So direction of the magnetic field is in this cross product. So first of all uh, as I promised to you in the uh, previous class, that from this point, uh, most of the equations are going to have cross product. So you have to be very, very comfortable uh, applying right hand rule in order to find directions of the cross product. Right. So guys, don't wait till the end. Uh, if you need help, come to me, shoot me a mail. We can. Uh, meet sort of virtually outside of the class, outside of office hours, outside of the class, and uh, I can work with you more. But you must have no troubles applying um, applying right hand rule number one, basically, right, in order to find direction of the cross product. So in this case, uh, so how should we use it? Again, like I discussed with you yesterday, so this is basically like vector A. You remember we practiced yesterday, and this is our head, it's our vector B, right? So first, you need to, in order to find direction of the magnetic field in this case, first you need to take the first vector in the cross product, ds, uh, align your hand, again the right hand, align your right hand along this vector, in this case, uh, you see it's a horizontal db, so again, right hand. So I have to, I re, okay, I orient it like this. Right. Or oh, like, I mean, uh, align it along ds, right? Then vector r, the second vector in the cross product, you see direction of r is somewhat up. Yeah, towards the point in question. So ds horizontal, r is somewhat up. So apply, imagine. So first align my hand, I have to align my hand along ds. Yeah, it must be horizontal. And then, uh, of course, I need to orient my hand and position it like this with my palm up because only in this position with this orientation I can bend my fingers uh, towards our direction so you see our direction is somewhat up so in my fingers in that direction right so then uh, you see my th thumb outstretched thumb gives me direction of the uh, cross product in this case uh, basically relative to this uh, plane vertical plane it's uh, towards you or out of the page, right? But of course, this is three-dimensional picture, but you can easily slightly adjust this picture, right? So in that case, uh, vector B will be out of the board, out of the screen towards you, right? So make sure that you see that. So ds cross r and uh, magnetic field will be towards you, right? So again, direction of the magnetic field is determined by this cross product. We're going to use this a law today in a reasonably com complicated problem. So then next, 
Um, so we discussed this law. I think nothing else can be discussed except for look. But what if we, uh, for example, want to find uh, the uh, direction of the magnetic field at this point on this horizontal plane? What will be uh, a direction of the magnetic field in this case? So R hat in that case will be sort of towards that point from this section towards that point so that our head will lie also in this plane in the horizontal plane so ds is still in that direction so again apply right hand rule so first i have to align along ds my hand mm -hmm. all right and then i have to orient it in this way because only in this position in with this orientation i can bend my fingers uh, along vector r and as a result my thumb gives me direction of the cross product in this case magnetic field at this point, at the point on this horizontal plane will be straight down, straight down. So over here it's a horizontal, then straight down. Then if you can imagine that, for example, this plane, vertical plane, goes below the wire, then if I ask you what will be the direction of the magnetic field on that side of the plane, below the wire, again, on a vertical plane, but below the wire, Again, you can apply the same right hand rule and you will see that in that, in those points, magnetic field will be into the board, into this, into the page. Right. And then if you uh, imagine that uh, this horizontal plane goes uh, beyond this wire to the other side. And if I ask you, what's the direction of the magnetic field on that side, on far side of the wire, uh, of the plane? Again, if you apply right hand rule, you will see that magnetic field will be straight up. So you see, uh, basically, uh, magnetic field lines, they are uh, points like this. So this is our wire. Above, it's uh, horizontal like this. Then over here, it will be straight down. Then over here, it will be that way. Over here, it will be straight up. So you see, if you connect this electric uh, magnetic field vectors, uh, magnetic field lines are going to form circles circles centered on the wire circles centered on the wire so magnetic field lines in this case like this this will this is one of the magnetic field lines and what is interesting that uh, there, there there is no compo there are no there is no component of the magnetic field right along the wire on the perpendicular you see perpendicular to the wire all the time no uh, component along the wire so that's what i uh, wrote here typed um okay so uh next so we introduced a uh, magnetic uh, magnetic field b right but we didn't discuss units Actually, pretty much, uh, yeah, now it's the right time uh, to discuss our units. Okay, let me uh, flip to the next slide. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the units of B. And I told you, right, uh, what, at the beginning of this semester about this discrimination of the electric field. And now again, it's time to mention that. Because you remember, when we introduced uh, electric field, it's a, uh, from the point of view of physics, it's, it, it is as important as magnetic field. Electric field, magnetic field, they're equally important for, to physics, right? Uh, but nevertheless, uh, electric field, the electric field doesn't have the special SI unit, but the magnetic field has special SI unit. How come? And again, uh, the explanation, as I told you, are uh, very practical because electric field is used mainly by physicists, hardcore physicists, right? But the magnetic field is used uh, much more often because in a few classes we will see uh, magnetic field is responsible uh, or involved in the production of the electric current. And of course, electric current production is almost everywhere, right? So it makes sense uh, uh, to, simplify, uh, to simplify life of all those people, engineers, right, technicians and uh, researchers, uh, by introducing the special SI unit for the magnetic field. So this is, this is the only explanation I can give because magnetic field is used more often uh, practically, <coughs> right? So units Tesla in SI units.
it's uh, uh, named after, of course, great uh, researcher, right, uh, Nikola Tesla. And you know what? A uh, couple of years ago, just I was just preparing for the class and decided, you know what, let me just Google just the word Tesla. I typed in Google Tesla. Press enter. And I started searching for uh, websites about actually Nikola Tesla. It took me 10 ser Google search pages, you know, like one page on the screen, right? Maybe with 20 uh, links to different sites. So it took me 10 Google search pages before I found uh, the link uh, to the f first link to the website, to a website about Nikola Tesla. All the links before it was about this car Tesla. After that, I hate this car with all my heart, right? It's just this smartphone on wheels with motor, basically this sh shadowed completely uh, the name of this great uh, scientist, right? So for me, it's, uh, since then I have a special feelings towards Tesla car. Right? <clears throat> but again, it's just mine. And uh, just to emphasize, so the units of the magnetic field is uh, Tesla. And actually, uh, one Tesla, it's a gigantic magnetic field, right? So uh, here, just to, so that you can get the feeling, uh, values of magnetic fields produced by, okay, different uh, objects, right? So uh, magnetic field on the surface of the Earth, oh, the order of uh, 10 times, uh, 10 to the power of minus 5, Tesla, right? Fridge magnets, right? So... Uh, what, uh, 10 to the power of minus 3, right? This one of, one of the strongest uh, magnets, uh, right? So only 10 Tesla, right? So one Tesla, it's a very, very strong magnetic field. Okay, so we introduce magnetic field. Uh, first, uh, uh, fundamental law, which can be used to find magnetic field and units, units of Tesla, right? Okay, so now, um, as I said, that Biot-Savar law, it's universal law, right? It can be applied anywhere by anyone and for any piece of wire, right? <laughs> Still using this, right? Uh, so, but what's the simplest case? The simplest case, infinitely long straight wire. So let's ask ourselves, what will be the value of the magnetic field, net magnetic field, net magnetic field? Right. Uh, for example, at a certain distance uh, from the center of the wire. Right. At a certain distance, I don't know, d from the center of the wire. Right. Okay. And so, what do you have to do in this case? You just need to integrate. Right. So yeah, this this is situation. So we have a infinitely long straight wire with current i. Again, the keyword straight and uh, infinitely long. And we want to find magnetic field at a certain distance uh, from the uh, wire. Right, so again, what do you have to do? You just need to grab Biot-Savar law and start integrating it from this infinity all the way to that infinity, right? And uh, I did it once when I first uh, started teaching this physics 2 course in summer, actually in summer 2014, uh, there was a small class, okay, a reasonably small, like 30 students. And uh, yeah, actually I integrated. It took me like 15, 20 minutes uh, to complete this integration with all the explanations. And students looking was me, at me with round eyes, kind of, what, are you crazy completely? What are you doing, right? So it wasn't a uh, completely trivial integration, right? So after that, I decided, you know what? I'm not going to do that integration anymore. <coughs> yeah. Just have the experience. So I decided, uh, so just tell you. So if you do that integration, you will end up with this formula for the magnetic field, okay, net magnetic field, net magnetic field, basically created by the whole wire, infinitely long straight wire, at the distance d, okay, you see that, d in the denominator, so it's an expression mu naught, that new constant, times the value of the current and divided by 2 pi d, d is that shortest distance from the center of the wire to the point in question. You know what, what uh, again, I would complain slightly about this formula because usually D is used, sort of like an unwritten convention, D is used to denote a particular given distance. But 
uh, here uh, the author used d basically as the variable right so usually most of the books they use r small usually r small it's a variable right which varies from I know, from zero all the way to infinity right but d is usually a uh, particular given distance right again it's not a big deal it's not a crime but it just feels a little bit strange when I, when I see something like that usually most of the books use divided by 2 pi r right? even the first problem which we are going to discuss uh, there will be d and that will be a particular distance as a result it doesn't it, it, it doesn't feel great okay anyway so uh, we're going to use this formula a lot and again and another reason why I decided to skip integration and derivation of this formula because uh, maybe at the end of today's class maybe on Monday right at the beginning of uh, of Monday's class we will introduce Ampere's law and using Ampere's law it's much much easier to derive this formula so that's the main uh, main reason right so using Ampere's law we will be able to derive this formula much much easier right so that's why I decided to skip this complicated integration <coughs> So um, then uh, what else I was planning to mention, right? Uh, just trying to <laughs> collect my thoughts. Right. Um, there was something else. Ah, yeah, so now next. So now we know how we can find a uh, magnitude of the electric field uh, created by, um, the, by an infinitely long straight wire. But next question, uh, what about direction? Because magnetic field is a vector. It has the magnitude and direction all the time. Uh, so what can be done in this case? Okay, sort of following uh, the basic ideas which we introduced yesterday in the previous class, right? So what you're supposed to do? You're supposed to, I know, grab your uh, compass needle, right? And start moving around uh, the uh, wire, right? In order to find the directions of the magnetic field, right? And then you can connect them, get uh, get magnetic field lines, and again direction of, of the magnetic field lines. Right? But the thing is, it's not very practical, right? Because not very often we have <laughs> compasses, right, or uh, compass needles next to us. Of course, it's better to come up with some mnemonic rule which can be used um, to find directions of those magnetic field lines. And so, again, we're going to use and we're going to introduce right hand rule right hand rule number two in order to find a uh, direction of the magnetic field lines first of all of course using compass needle you can uh, find that uh, magnetic field lines are going to form circles but also we basically saw it um, when we introduce uh, bio savar law right that's why I guided you uh, trying to find the magnetic field direction at different points around that wire right and we saw that magnetic field lines actually uh, form circles, something like this. And so that's what we have here on this uh, picture. And of course, you can draw as many magnetic field lines as you want, right? Then, uh, so how? We, so we need to remember that infinitely long straight wire form uh, magnetic field lines in the form of circles, in the for, yeah, in the shape, in the form of circles. Then what about direction? As I said, you can use the compass needle, but it's not very practical. So we need to introduce right hand rule number two. So which works like this. So if let's say this is direction of the current. So let's say up in this wire. So you need to take your outstretched thumb. Right. Align along that direction and then curl your fingers around the wire. So, thumb is in the direction of the current and curl your fingers around the wire. So, your fingers, curled, curled fingers, gives you, gave you, give you uh, the direction of the magnetic field lines. Right. It's a very simple rule. Usually students, after a few minutes, they're quite comfortable applying it and they don't have any significant issues. And you see also on the picture. Yeah, I took this picture from the book. And I usually call it right hand rule number two to sort of uh, separate it from uh, the right hand rule which we used to apply, uh, which we used to find direction of the cross product. You remember yesterday we, we practiced that. So that's what I call right hand rule number one. And this is right hand rule number two, right? So I'm going to stick only to these two rules. And on this picture, apply it for, uh, for this situation, right? So you see, 
cross. What does it mean cross? Uh, it gives us or tells us uh, that uh, current flows into the board. You remember why cross? Basically, that's what you're going to see if an arrow is going to fly away from you, right? That notation which we introduced yesterday, right? So basically, it means that current is into, into the uh, screen. So then apply right hand rule. So your thumb must be into the screen, into the board, and then you curl fingers around the wire, and you see that's the correct direction. So my curl fingers, you see, ma yeah, matches uh, those directions. Yeah. So that's how we can find magnitude of the magnetic field created by a long, infinitely long straight wire with current. And using right hand rule, we can find direction of the magnetic field lines. And of course, direction of the magnetic field. Uh, this formula will be used a lot, <laughs> right? Almost till the end of the semester. Right? So, and most of the time students don't have uh, issues applying that formula. <clears throat> So next, a uh, couple of uh, conceptual questions, and then I will start looking at examples. The first one. So now we know how we can handle uh, one uh, infinite, uh, how we can handle one uh, inf magnetic field created by one uh, infinitely long straight wire. But what if we uh, have two? So you see, a wire number one and wire number two and value of the current, magnitude of the current, exactly the same in both of these wires. But you see, one, uh, this current, this, the top one, is into the board, into the screen. This one, the second one, the bottom one, is out. So currents are in the opposite directions. Then, we pick this point, which is equidistant from both of these wires. wires. So this distance and uh, that distance exactly the same, right? So what can you tell about the direction of the net magnetic field at that point? Net magnetic field, because here we have two wires, definitely we'll have uh, two magnetic fields. Magnetic field created by the first wire and, by, and then by the second. And of course, there were, we can introduce, of course, the net magnetic field. So what's the direction of the net magnetic field at that point? That, yeah, dot black dot. Okay, give it a try. Um, yeah, questions like this uh, I use sometimes on the uh, exam among multiple choice questions. Okay, let me uh, look at your answers. Okay, enough. Um, so now let me discuss it. Again, physics is very simple, right? So we have um, the first wire, the top one, number one, is going to create uh, its own magnetic field, which is, which is, of course, going to fill the whole space all the way to infinity. Of course, the second wire is going to do the same. Right? And we know how we can find a magnetic, uh, magnetic field strength, right? just from the previous slide that formula mu naught uh, times i divided by 2 pi r and also we know how we can find directions of these magnetic uh, fields uh, just using right hand rule uh, number two right so let me uh, apply basically that right hand rule uh, number uh, two so first of all we need to uh, recall so magnetic field lines form circles right centered on the wire. So let me uh, draw uh, one magnetic field line, okay, created by the first wire. And uh, that magnetic field line uh, goes through this point in question. Right. So of course I will draw just a, uh, okay, I need to bring forward slides. So of course it is going to uh, be a circle like this. Okay, I use green, right. And so direction is, okay, apply right hand rule number two. So the current is into the board. So right hand outstretch your thumb in the direction of the current. So it means into the page and then uh, curl your fingers around the wire. 
So you see my wire and I curl around the wire. So magnetic field lines, uh, okay, direction is clockwise. And that's what you uh, saw on the picture, it. clockwise direction. So that's a uh, magnetic field line from the top wire. Now uh, let me do exactly the same from the, uh, let me draw this similar magnetic field line created by the wire number two. Again, it will be circle, but now I use blue color, right? So uh, current is out of the board, out of the screen. So my thumb must be out, right? And then uh, curl your fingers around the wire, right? So you see magnetic field lines uh, must have what this is counterclockwise direction. Yeah. And that's what you see on the picture. Blue circle has counterclockwise direction. So then how can we extract information about the direction of the magnetic field? Because what we drew uh, just now, these are magnetic field lines. But what about magnetic field vector? It must be tangent. It's like with the uh, electric field lines. So if you have uh, electric field lines or magnetic field lines, right? And let's say you want to know the magnetic field at this point, it's tangent. It must be tangent. Right. So that's, it means that uh, at this black dot, if I try to draw a magnetic field, green, this green magnetic field, of course, tangent, it means it must be somewhat that in that direction, somewhat down, right? To the right and somewhat down. And then uh, exactly the same will be, uh, I can draw for the blue uh, magnetic field line, but it will be somewhat up and to the left, right? So it will be that way. And of course, magnitudes of these, of both of these vectors are going to be the same. Why? Because we know the formula right, uh, from the previous slide, mu naught i current divided by two pi r. Currents are the same, right? In absolute value, magnitude of this current and magnitude of that current, they're the same. And in that formula, we have magnitude. And then divided by two pi r. And r are the distances. Okay, this distance and that distance are the same because I, I told you that uh, um, that um, dot is equidistant uh, from both of those currents. Right? So it means that magnitudes are the same. So now principle of superposition, you just need to add them up as vectors. So complete the uh, parallelogram and uh, so uh, net magnetic field is going to be uh, straight, must be, will be horizontal and to the left, horizontal and to the left. So that's how it should be analyzed. Of course, I'm trying to explain everything, but of course, in real life, it should take you, I don't know, a minute or maybe less than a minute to come up with this conclusion. Okay, so that's the uh, first question. Now, uh, the next one. Yeah, so the answer is uh, D left and most of you picked that answer. Good. Uh, so the next one, let's make uh, the situation slightly more complicated. Uh, now, let's take the top wire, which is in this case uh, horizontal like this. Right. Turn it by 90 degrees. So the bottom wire will be still into the screen, but the top one will be uh, turn by 90 degrees, like this. So you see the top one, yeah, they still both, both of them are still horizontal, but this current flows from right to the left and this current flows from, uh, from there towards you, right? So again, uh, values of these currents are the same and we need to find the uh, net the direction of the net magnetic field, again, at the point which is in the middle between these two wires. Right. So over here somewhere, no, okay, so you got it. Uh, equidistant uh, at the point which is equidistant uh, to both wires. So uh, it's over here. Probably I should have put a dot now, I just realized. Right. Okay, here. So that this distance and this distance are the same. Okay, now give it a try. Again, basically the same approach uh, must be used like what I just did, but now you have to be uh, more careful.
photo. Analysis should be the same, but of course now geometry is slightly different. And of course the, uh, the result will be also somewhat different. Okay, so let's do the same. Uh, let me draw uh, magnetic field lines. Okay, one for the top wire and one for the bottom one. So let me start with the top. Of course, magnetic field line uh, is a circle centered on the wire and direction is again the same right hand rule number two. So outstretch your thumb and a magnetic field line should be like this. So above the wire, it's um, towards us. Okay, this is the wire, our wire. So above will be towards us, right? And below it will be away from us, right? So magnetic field uh, below this wire is going to point uh, into this screen, right? And that's what you see over here. I try to draw a three-dimensional picture, right? Then the bottom wire, the same. So current is out. So our magnetic field line is going to have this direction, which is uh, counterclockwise, counterclockwise direction, right? And that's what we have here on the picture, right? counterclockwise. So, and that is the point in question, point we were, where we want to find magnetic field. So now let's draw magnetic field vector, actually. Right, so the green one is going to be into the board, like I just told you, right? And the blue one is, of course, uh, to the right. right. Again, it must be tangent. Okay, it's a tangent to the blue circle. But for that, um, okay, that's what? Purple, not purple. Whatever color. <laughs> uh, so that is uh, into the board. Right, into the board. So now, in order to make a situation slightly clearer, let's uh, look from the top, top view of this situation, right? So if you uh, look at the top, from the top, you're going to see something like this. So that is your B to the right, blue B, and that, whatever, purple uh, B is, okay, in this picture, it's into the board, but now it's uh, up. Right, so you see they're perpendicular to each other. Of course, if you want to add them, of course, you need to again uh, add them as vectors, principle of superposition. And of course, your net vector is going to be somewhat to the right and somewhat into the, um, into the screen. So none of these uh, options, except for E, none of the above.